everyone, in today's video, I'm taking the new Sony GM 14mm f1.8 out for a spin out in the fields today. We're gonna be doing some autumn photography to test out the image quality during daylight, and we are also going to be taking it out to do some astrophotography as well, which I'm really excited for. So today I'm gonna to share with you guys the unedited 100% zooms of the photos that we're taking. We're gonna get started and I hope you guys enjoy. First thing I wanna do is vlog with this lens. I feel like because this is so wide angle at 14 millimeters, it would make such a good vlogging lens. So right at the moment, I'm kind of holding it really close to my face. And this is what it looks like with my arm outstretched. I really like it because you can see just so much of the background. It also doesn't hurt my arm having to have it outstretched. I'm like kind of resting it against my body, but it's still a really good framing for vlogging. So it's good for someone with weak arms like me. The only thing to keep in mind about this lens is that it doesn't have a front filter thread, so you won't be able to use ND filters on it. If you're using something like an FX6, you won't have any troubles. Hopefully we'll see some rear ND filter options in the near future. So you can use a lens like this for vlogging and video on a camera like the a7S III or the a7C or any other camera. So I have my arm outstretched with the camera and I'm gonna ask it to, fo <laughs> ask it to focus on my phone and we'll see how fast it focuses. Wow, pretty good. Okay, so Dan and I are gonna walk around now and try and find some autumn colors so we can do some photo tests with this lens as well. Oh, look at these delicious autumn leaves. Okay, we found some color. So I'm gonna take this lens off the A7S III and put it on the A7 III to take some photos. I'm gonna just try taking some snaps. Shooting with a 14 is so weird for me. I can't believe how much you can just see in the frame. So exaggerated as well. It looks really cool. I really like the clarity in these detail photos when shooting wide open at f1.8. It's actually quite sharp. The color rendition is great as well. The colors look really vibrant and true to life. I tested two photos at f8 and f16. I personally really like the sharpness at f8. The image looks super crisp. You can really see the bokeh here. I'm actually gonna get a couple where the leaves are severely underexposed, but the background, so where the bokeh is, is gonna be well exposed. And we'll zoom up and see what it looks like. There is a little bit of texture in the bucket, but overall, I think it looks really nice, clean, and I love how round it is. Oh, I like these with the sun on them. I feel like it'd be cool to shoot through the leaves like Dan is doing right now. Okay, I'm gonna get some foreground blur. Maybe if I hold up the leaf like that. It's pretty cute. This is the only photo I noticed that had a small amount of chromatic aberration in the branch on the left. Oh wait, I just saw this in the sun here. I'm like a moth to a flame. <laughs> Do you know what actually? You could probably take a really good selfie with this lens. Even though 14 millimeters is a lot wider than what I'm used to, <laughs> the fast focusing made this such a fun lens to shoot with. This lens has a close focus distance of 25 centimeters, so I'm gonna switch it over to manual focus and take a close-up shot of these leaves. So I'm gonna focus it as close as it goes. And I'm gonna take a couple of shots just to make sure I'm getting one that's tack sharp as well. The wind's kind of blowing the leaves around a little bit. <laughs> We also have some really nice backlight with the yellow leaves here in this location. So I'm gonna try and shoot and get a lens flare with this lens as well to see what it looks like. So it looks like we have a small lens flare with this lens. It's a bit of an orb shape, but it's quite defined and it has a bit of a green color to it as well. I really, we've got a lot of nice colors here. You've got the bright yellow leaves and then the bright blue sky as well. Again, in these backlit shots, I'm pretty impressed that there's no CA. Also, the color rendition and sharpness is really beautiful. And now I'm also going to take some portraits of Dan. Whoa, this is such a wide lens for portraits. 
I'm gonna get like a shot from down here. Lean down towards me and swing your arms. <laughs> you, I reckon you should look to the side. <laughs> I'm giving you quality content here. I don't know. But with your chin down, you're too high up. Yeah. And then let's do something with this one here. I like the yellow one. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, keep looking up. I'm trying to get, you can't see because I'm shooting too high up, but I've got like a canopy of trees just above Dan's head, which looks cool. So we put the 14 mil on the Sony a7S III and Dan is gonna get some B-roll of me at 50 FPS. Get closer to me if you need it. Can you see? Feet to head. <laughs> Are you kidding me? a 14 millimeter and not take some actual landscape photos. I have some comparisons between f1.8 and f5.6. Again, I'm loving the sharpness and clarity of these 5.6 shots, but it's really impressive that this wide angle lens is so sharp when you're using it wide open. This is a solid lens and built like other GM lenses with the aperture ring and customizable button. It's also only 460 grams and pretty small, which is an added bonus for a lens that you might be hiking with to get your shots. In these photos, I do find the lens flare a little distracting, but at least it's small enough that you can easily clone it out with Lightroom. Okay guys, it's time to do astrophotography. I'm so excited. It is a little bit cloudy today, but they are quite sparse in the sky and fast moving. So they should come up as like wispy bits in our photo. I have an app called Starwalk and I like using that to see where the Milky Way is in the sky. And I use this app on both the Pixel and the iPhone. So it works for both Android and Apple and it's free. First thing I wanna do with my camera is I'm gonna have it at a very high ISO. So I've got it on ISO 8000 to 10,000. So I can move it around and point it in the direction that I want it to be in. And now I'm going to change my settings. So I'm gonna start with shooting wide open at F1.8 and I'm gonna bring my ISO down to about maybe 640. And I'm gonna try a shutter speed of, let's do eight seconds. I'm also going to try to manual focus on the stars and I'm also going to set my shutter at a two second delay. So when I press the button, it doesn't like shake the long exposure. And we'll see how that looks like and how I have to adjust my settings depending on how that comes out. So I think the exposure looks good, but I think the clouds are just way too prominent in that part of the sky. Also, it doesn't help that we have almost a full moon going on as well. So we're not going to get like a super contrasty Milky Way shot today, unfortunately. So I'm going to point it that way instead. It looks like there's less clouds. So hopefully we'll get a more contrasty looking shot. It's kind of crazy because you like that area looks super clean, but then there's still a lot of clouds when you take a photo. 
So for this next photo, I'm gonna get a little bit of the cliff in the bottom third. Since the stars aren't super prominent, I feel like I need something extra in the photo to make it look a bit more interesting. I think they're also like back burning. I think there's still a bit of smoke in there. Yes, that is way better with the cliffs in the shot. Actually, that really bright spot in the middle of the photo just connecting to the cliffs, that's actually the spot where they were backburning. So that is still smoke covering the sky. Can't smell it though. Um, but the next thing that we want to do is Dan and I want to take some self-portraits with the stars. So the thing is, because Dan and I are moving subjects, we will try to stay as still as possible. So in order to be able to capture us still in the shot, I'm going to have to bump up my ISO and have the shutter speed as fast as possible. So tested it out here, I think we're going to use an ISO of 6400 and a one second exposure. I think I can stay still for one second. <laughs> we'll see. And then we can frame ourselves. Okay, we're gonna use the Sony app, Imaging Edge Mobile, so we can compose the shot and press the shutter from our phones. Yay! All right, let's do it. Let's do a real hipster shot, step apart, holding hands. I think we should look away from each other because my hair's gonna <laughs> go in my face all the way. Ready? I'm not. Okay. Ready? That's cute. Wait, are we in the center? Take a step that way. Ready? I think that was a good one. <laughs> Coming at you. Yeah, right, come here. No, we need like a gap. And then should we lean forward, touch noses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look like a giant with my jacket. <laughs> the wide angle's not that flattering. <laughs> like maybe we lean towards the camera. <laughs> Maybe we should just go far away. <laughs> oh yeah, no, here, yes. Does that help with your focusing? Okay, that's gonna be cool. Stop moving. No, you're leaning too much. Let's just yeah. look at each other. We have to stand straight, no lean. <laughs> no, we just stand like this. Yeah, and no lean. <laughs> Why is it weird, man? Yeah, that's better. Okay, we have to like stand on each other's feet. What the heck? So we had the time lapse running and it looks like the smoke is actually getting blown away. So the sky is pretty clear. So as soon as that's finished, we're gonna take a couple more Astro shots and hopefully they will have more contrast in them. So that is it for today's video on the Sony GM 14 millimeter F1.8. I had so much fun shooting with this lens, even though it's kind of weird for me to shoot with such a wide angle lens. Usually the widest I go for photos is 35. And then I use my 20 1.8 to vlog with and to do video work with. But yeah, I definitely had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that and seeing all the photo examples. If you want to download some high resolution JPEG files that I took today, I'll leave a link down in the description to my blog where you can take a look at them. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.